Buongiorno. To anybody out there watching, thank you so much for joining to see our paper. Is an auditory event more tacete? This is an undertaking by illustrissimo professore Federico Fontana, Maurizio Favaro from the University of Udine, and I'm Hanna Jarvelainen from Zurich University of the Arts. First, a little commercial message from our esteemed first author. Hi, Dr. Sensi, from Federico Fontana. Ciao. And to introduce Maurizio. Hello, I'm Maurizio Favaro. I'm a master degree student in computer science at the University of Udine. I start this project uh, with Professor Fontana for the course of uh, auditory and tactile interactions. And the first outcome uh, was uh, interesting, so uh, the project evolved and now I'm really happy it's been accepted for the SMC conference. Now I'm uh, looking forward to keep working on it uh, in the next month, uh, uh, hoping to find further uh, results uh, on this topic. Thank you. So, this was an audiovisual experiment on cross-modal associations to the words Takete and Maloma. The effect dates back to the 1920s when Wolfgang Köhler found associations between rounded visual shapes and the word Maluma, and on the other hand, spiky visual shapes and the word Takete. This effect has been reproduced for various word pairs since, such as Kiki and Buba. And in addition to visual shapes, it exists for gestures, animations, audition, taste, and even odors. Our goal was to show the effect in an audiovisual environment and to avoid onomatopoeic links between sounds and words. And um, the idea was to find a one and same audiovisual event that we could then manipulate in various ways. And this is what it came up to. Balls rolling on a surface. In case the MP4 rendering from PowerPoint did not show the video correctly, you can download the materials from our repository, which is given in the paper. Anyway, these were the factors that were manipulated. The ball was either smooth or notched. The path was either rounded or zigzagged, and we hypothesized that the notched and the zigzagged conditions would be uh, would cause more takete responses, so we called them the takete conditions, and the other two then the maluma conditions. These events were filmed and uh, played back to the participants in either the audio-visual mode or in visual-only mode, without sound. Three versions of each stimulus were filmed, and all resulting 24 stimuli were rated by all of our 16 participants. Their task was to decide whether the event was of a takete or maluma kind. As a motivation, they were told that the experiment was based on a Polynesian game, and afterwards a couple of subjects said that they knew about this effect, but the other others uh, did not. Looking at the results, we can see that in the audiovisual condition, whenever either the ball or the path, or indeed both, were of the takete kind, then participants tended to give more takete responses. In the visual only condition, it was rather the other way around. Uh, we can see that whenever either the path or the ball was of the maluma kind, or indeed both, participants would choose a Maluma response. So much so that in the one condition where both ball and path were of the Takete kind, without sound, participants gave random responses. 
The results were confirmed by statistical analysis. We fit a logistic regression model on the probability of a Takete response and estimated its parameters by Bayesian inference. This model was additive, so it did not include interactions. However, it did confirm that with a Takete path, we had credibly more Takete responses, as well as with a Takete ball. In absence of sound, we had credibly less Takete responses and more Maluma responses. And this is what these effects look like in terms of actual um, probability of a Takete response. And we can see that the modality factor is actually quite strong in comparison to both the path and, and bull. So we measured and showed the Takete Maluma effect for non onomatopoeic sounds in an audiovisual context. In absence of sound, the effect was present, but it was weaker, judging by the one condition where with a Takete ball and Takete path, without sound, participants were unable to decide and gave random responses. Both the ball and the path had an equally strong effect, and indeed in the hypothesized direction, a spiky ball and a zigzag path did produce more Takete responses. The interesting bit was the auditory bias toward a Takete response and the visual-only bias toward a Maluma response. Why this happened, we're not quite sure, but here are a few candidates for factors in the bias effects. First of all, material characteristics can be perceived pretty well from the auditory channel alone. And as the ball was always made of the same uh, pretty hard material that might bias the auditory channel, in consequence, merely absence of the Takete bias in the auditory channel, maybe the visual channel was judged more towards Maluma. To find out, we would like to split the groups into an audiovisual group, a visual-only group, and an auditory-only group in the hope of finding enough participants for such experiment. One factor that was not controlled or, or varied in the, ex in the experiment was speed and acceleration of the ball, which might be something that is perceived pretty well from the visual channel in turn. And one more thing to consider is the known visual preference for curved objects that us humans tend to have. Then there's the question of auditory dominance. Um, since the audiovisual results were definitely different from the visual only results, it means that the auditory channel moderated, uh, modulated the results. Would this always happen in a task like this, which involves temporal processing? There is some evidence of auditory dominance in such cases, or did it happen now because the auditory channel was more informative in a way or more reliable for the task? This we also don't know. So thanks for all for watching and uh, also thanks to the organizers. It must be less than hilarious to get to organize um, an online conference for a second year in a row. So thanks a lot. And uh, enjoy the SMC, everybody. Ciao.